All right, so question number three is all about safety and traveling abroad. And so there are many things to consider when you travel abroad. It's obviously you're stepping outside of your comfort zone. Most of the time you are going with a group of people, so make friends and make sure that you stick with those friends as you go anywhere. Uh, make sure that you have somebody that you can check in on um, and vice versa, as well as whatever the student uh, to faculty is. So make sure that you have faculty contact, make sure that you're still able to, it's a lot easier now to just get on the internet and Skype whoever yep. or do a FaceTime, doesn't matter. Um, but make sure you have those contacts set up, have all your emergency stuff. That's the first um, thing they had us do is like yep. plug in all the emergency phone numbers of like your advisor, your teachers, and like the actual emergency nine, number nine, because it's nine. not 911. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Yeah, you want to be careful that you're not plugging in nine one one. Nobody's coming. I think I think it works internationally, but you should call nine 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 because it works faster. Oh, was that awesome. what you were going to say? Yeah, I thought you were saying nine one one. Like no, no, nine nine nine. That's it, right? Yeah, yeah. That's it. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Yeah. Quickly, yeah. No, I'm pretty sure it's nine nine nine. Check before you yeah. dial the phone. Yeah. Don't. Um, don't, Don't just our take our word for it. <laughs> uh, also, for money, uh, I think, again, it, as times have changed, it's not as big of an issue as it was, but like I'm very much a cash guy even to today, yep. so please don't look me on the street. But uh, <laughs> make sure you have backup credit cards and, yep. uh, and you know, yep. all those things. Make sure you have your, your passport. Passport. Uh, Keep it safe. Never carry it with you. Yeah. Uh, make sure that's in the lockbox at the hotel or wherever you're staying. Yep. Um, Make sure that that's like one of the first things that you have, and then yep. go somewhere. Because if you get pickpocketed and it's gone, and uh, you're gonna have a bad time. So. Yeah, um, our program took uh, the first. They had to send a copy, and then they took copies of it, so that if we lost our copy, mm -hmm. um, if we lost our passport, they could take it and bring us to the uh, embassy and get it fixed. Yeah, so make sure know where the embassy have, is. Yeah, know where the embassy is, <laughs> uh, and have copies of your passport so that you can bring it to the like U.S. embassy and be like, "Hi, my passport got stolen. This is a huge issue. Help me out." <laughs> I think yeah, it's also important uh, in in my scenario. I don't know if you guys did it too, but having the copy with your faculty, yep. uh, but keeping one at your parents' house or wherever your, your home body so is, too. so many copies of my um, passport. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just, it's helpful to have. Know how many copies you have. So yeah. Overprepared <laughs> than, no, yeah, yeah. Know, and then not need it, yeah. rather than vice versa. But, uh, and uh, so I'm just going to go into a fun story. Uh, and so it's uh, all about the safety and then also about um, how it, it potentially can mess you up um, and not scary. Yeah, it's kind of scary. <laughs> um, but my friend Steve uh, was with me through freshman year. We ended up, uh, I've talked about him in the podcast in the past. We um, lived with different roommates. We both couldn't stay in our roommate. We ended up moving in together the second half of freshman year. I stayed with him for two and a half years after that. Uh, and at one point he ended up going to Montreal. Like, sophomore year it was junior, yeah probably junior second yeah. semester and so when he was in Montreal uh, Steve decided to explore on his own and so he was just walking the streets uh, looking to have a good time um, and he met somebody and was talking with them they were like hey like we're gonna go out to this party why don't you follow me here Steve's like normal looking guy okay sure why not so follows him to one house follows him to another house and then Steve starts getting a little sketched out to all the different places that he's going. So he ended up leaving, and then almost every single corner that he was at, he would turn around and this guy was following him. So he got back to the hotel room that night, talked to his faculty member, and was like, listen, i got to get out of here. This, like, yeah. He was very paranoid. I think he took it a little bit too far. Uh, but his roommates, uh, Carl, and I'm trying to remember who else was, but Carl contacted me. He was like, do you know where Steve is? I said, no, I have no idea what you're talking about. He's with you in Montreal. Yeah. He's like, no, he's gone. He's gone. Uh, so we had no idea until, I don't know, three or four days later that Steve was now back in the States. Um, because of all the different kerfuffle, uh, he ended up not taking that semester. He missed all of his courses, and then he wow. had to stay back a year. He ended up switching majors, uh, nice. and he graduated the same year as I was nice. uh, Which was fun, because I got to go back and celebrate with those guys. But... Uh, always go out with people that you know. Yep. Uh, don't just randomly decide, even if you're comfortable 
defending yourself or stranger whatever. danger guys yeah. <laughs> making your <laughs> friends is not that way. yeah yeah um yeah i yeah <laughs> well i mean i went on a couple dates when I was in Ireland um, and I met them in public and I met them in public several times yeah. before ever like becoming friends outside of that and I have like a very good friend now um, that, but like and, and I talk to people in pubs in Ireland but like don't just don't lose your common sense don't mm. follow a person you don't know yeah. to a house that's random like yeah that Don't happened. forget all your stranger danger. Yeah, that <laughs> happened to me and my friends when I was in London. There were three of us, just three girls, and we went out. And it was a woman who was like, we were outside just talking to a bunch of people. And she was like, at this point it was really late, probably 2 o'clock in the morning. And she was like, you guys should come with me. Like, there's this no. bar that's still open. Like, no. down here it'll be so fun, da, da, da. And one of my friends was like, oh, my God, yeah, like, that's no. such a great idea. Like, it's we're having so much fun. And then my friend who lived in London was like, Oh no, like we're not leaving. We're not going with you ever. No, like don't <laughs> like get away from my friends. Um, so don't be that American abroad that's like, yeah, let's go, you know. So. <laughs> Take <True. laughs> you know, Haven't you guys watched Taken? Like, yeah. <laughs> like if you wouldn't do it here, you wouldn't go to with a stranger somewhere. Like, don't do it there. Yeah. There's still. Just and if you would, yeah, just the <laughs> <attack. Yeah. laughs> Just make them nice like, or safe. <laughs> yep. So I actually got pickpocketed oh. when I was abroad. I was tra- so I studied abroad in London and I was traveling to Barcelona and everybody like my grandparents were very scared. I was getting a pickpocketed and I'm like, can you calm down? Like it's not gonna was happen it your to grandparents me. That pickpocketed? <laughs> yes. They came to Barcelona <laughs> just to prove their point. Um, like everyone at home kept warning me about being safe with my wallet, and I'm always like pretty good about knowing where my bag is at all times. Um, but it was our last night in Barcelona, and a few of our people from our hostel, they all got people together, and we were all going out for the night. Um, and we even had, like, a guide to take us to all the different places. We could organize all <laughs> yeah. the things. That's yeah. Um, so we get on the subway. I didn't, I didn't even understand how to work the subway there, so I was very confused. Good and... Sir. It was all the people from our hostel, so I felt pretty safe, but I still had, like, a crossbody bag, mm-hmm. and it was had a buckle over it, and it was zipped, and I'm like, okay, good. There was one lady on the subway who kept on, like, getting a little too close to me, but, like, I couldn't feel her touching my bag or anything, so I'm like, it's fine. We were on the subway for two stops. We get off, and I look down, and my bag is open, and I had a just a wallet, like, inside my purse, and they had just taken the full wallet. It had my license, oh. my credit card. My parents gave me a travel credit card, all my cash. Wow. And that was it. Luckily, I didn't have too much cash. Um, and I had no idea where I was in Barcelona. I go up to our guide. I'm like, I just got pickpocketed. He goes, yeah, I warned you before this. I'm like, well, that doesn't help me now. Yeah, but, um, you just pickpocket him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's like, well, do you want to just keep coming out? I'm like, I have no money. i got to go yeah. cancel all my credit yeah. cards. Yeah. Like, I can't come out. That's so stressful. So I had to figure out, We had, me and my friends, like, had to figure out how to get back because we couldn't figure out how to get back into the subway. So we had to walk back to our hostel in the middle of the night. So luckily my friends were very kind mm-hmm. and they walked with me. Um, and I had to call my parents. Like, for me, it was mm. midnight, but yep. it was earlier for them. And, like, I couldn't even call my bank. Yep. I couldn't get a hold of my bank, so I had to call my mom. And she had to cancel all the cards. And, luckily, my cousin was coming to London yep. um, the next month, and she was able to bring me a new license and a new credit card, and my mom was able to order all of that yep. for me, awesome. which I was very awesome. thankful for. But yeah, if I learned anything, one... I had the, so my, with my purse, I had the zipper, like, on the back side of me, and that was my first mistake. Right on the front. So I put the, the crossbody yep. bag on the other side, so have the, the zipper, zipper on the front. is, like, in your sight. But also, don't walk around with both your credit cards. Like, mm-hmm. I had, yeah. I had my debit card and my parents' credit card, so maybe you don't, you don't need both. Yep. Mm-hmm. So leave one in the locker. <laughs> so, one of the first things they tell you about safety with the internet is don't post your location, because you don't want people to know that you're on vacation or everything. When you study abroad, you're away. And you want to make sure that you post your location. Uh, I went to Ireland alone um, about a year and a half ago for my 24th birthday. And I made sure to post at least 
once a day and I posted my location so that my parents knew where I was, they knew I was safe, and they knew I was having fun. Um, so especially where you're abroad and your family is going to be worried, post your location, have your Find My Friends app open, mm -hmm. uh, and things like that. That way, you, you know, every, your, your family knows where you are and you know that you're safe. Um, that's... I think one of the one of the most important parts of safety because like I said you're not supposed to post when you're abroad because or when you're on vacation because of like um, robbers and things like that and whatever but post your location when you're abroad so that your family it helps them calm down a little bit um, also generally stranger danger um, if you put down a glass and I went to Ireland, so pub culture, very huge, not necessarily like, not even like alcohol pub culture, but just like, pub culture, just yeah. pub culture is huge. And it's a huge part of like going abroad to Ireland, to London, where you have your local and you don't have to drink alcohol if you go there. I, a ton of Irish people are saying they're drinking Diet Cokes all night. Um, if you put your cup down, do not put it back up. If you've left it, if you go to the bathroom, bring your cup with you. Also, if someone offers to buy you a drink, you're the one that has to take it from the bartender. Yeah, yeah, don't the bar, let yeah. don't don't turn away from the bartender. You. Watch the bartender make drink. Um, again, even if it's non-alcoholic, like especially if it's non-alcoholic, like eat, eat, just like anything, just anything. Yeah. That's don't and again, that's something you. you can even apply to being alive yeah. in <laughs> this <laughs> country. Yeah. Just just general safety. Have you um, seen? Uh, they just, it's a relatively new thing, but it's a coaster that you can bring with you to mm -hmm. the bar. And when you leave, you put the coaster upside down on top of your glass, which mm -hmm. is kind of gross. But um, if somebody tampers with it while you're gone, you get an instant notification on your phone that's oh, like, that's yeah, cool. somebody moved your glass. Uh, so I, if you're into that, you <laughs> just do... take it to the bathroom. Yeah, yeah, a yeah, lot exactly. of, especially yeah. they give this to, cool they, <laughs> they give this tip to women. So a lot of times in women's room, they just have like a shelf that you can put your glass on. Um, and it's just, or finish your drink and then go to the bathroom and come yeah. back. But right. like, don't. That's a good, I feel like that's always safe. It's yeah. like you just finish it and then use that as your break to use yep. the bathroom. Like, time it out a little bit. Yep. Plus, then you don't have to go to the bathroom, it's patch page. Yeah, exactly. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> bathroom tips. <laughs> yep. So, but that's a huge safety thing. Um, and like, always use the buddy system. I, yeah, that's huge. Yeah. I admit, I traveled alone more often than I should have. Um, because the thing is that like when you go abroad you have this like group of like 50 people in your group and one of the whole reasons of going abroad is to meet people internationally and make friends who aren't necessarily just the people you know uh, but be safe about it so I would go out to like I, I made like I call them hour-long friends where I would go to different pubs and I just like chat with the people there yeah. uh, but I did that during broad daylight <laughs> uh, in the middle of the day and in places that I knew were safe um, and when you're studying or when you're when you're moving, make sure that you study up on like what neighborhoods are safe. Mm -hmm. And um, also, when you're going so out, if you're like going to another country that you don't know very well, or if you're new to the country you're going to, always have or have the address of the place that you're staying in. But that way, at the end of the night, if you can't get back, you can either oh. get into like a taxi. Yeah, what do you think I was going to no, say? No, no. I, I did the yep. same thing after one night of having too many beverages. Um, I couldn't remember where I was yeah. or where I, like my hotel room was. Yeah. <laughs> you like right like, like I, the forehead at the beginning of the yeah. <laughs> This is where I belong. Bring me here. This is where tattoos. Yeah. yeah. Also, I mean, <laughs> just, just <wake> up. <laughs> bringing that up as well. In a lot of countries, the drinking age is like 18. And if you're studying abroad, th that means that you are of legal drinking age. And just be very careful with that. Mm -hmm. um, just because that's, I mean... A, to a lot of people, it's a whole new realm. Um, so be safe with that, like know your limits, all that general stuff. And in a lot of places, it's also not as like. You will also stand out as American if yeah. you get like really, really you don't, drunk. Yeah, a lot of places it's not out. like very popular to get as, as drunk as most Americans Like in do. London, they, there's a bar on like every corner. So yeah. they go out after work pretty much every day and they just get like a couple drinks. Yeah. They always knew when the Americans came in because they'd be like shots and yep. on so like a Thursday. Yep. So just uh, just be nice and yeah. just respectful yeah. Yeah. of other cultures and like try not to be that yeah. American. <laughs> I think going back to not drinking. But, <laughs> yeah. Um, you were talking about the cross bag. That's part um, of safety, though. I, <laughs> as a male traveling, do not have the yeah. cross bag. 
Uh, inside pockets. So yes, uh, that's exactly what I was going to say. Inside pockets are the best way to go about it. Uh, but if you do take off your jacket or whatever you have, make sure you move it to your front pockets mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, when I was in Paris, I was walking and had my wallet on my inside. And I had just like a pamphlet and some other things in my back pocket and that stuff got snatched out. And it was all useless stuff that I didn't need. But yeah. I was like, oh. Wow. So yeah, yeah. yeah. like yeah. someone touched you and you didn't know. Yeah. 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 Weird. Um, um, true about the crossbody bag too, like whenever I wear mine, I kind of wear it almost in the front just to have it there. Or like if it's on the side, kind of like keep my hand nearby because yep. it's just, yeah. Or if you have it's a jacket, you can like wear it Oh yeah, underneath. under the jacket. Yeah, that's, wear a good, that's a good one. Too. One of the things they also Fanny warned me about was um, there's a lot of people who walk around with like credit card scanners. So like my mom bought um, me a special yeah, purse. Yeah. yeah, like you can't scan RFID. Um, make sure that you have an RFID protector around your passport. Mm. Oh. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things because they'll have like the RFID like protector and then they'll have like credit card things. That's so I used that, yeah, when I went to Ireland, um, when I was just on my own, um, I knew that I was going to have to carry my passport the whole time because I didn't have, like, a place that I was staying specifically. So I had a vest that I never took off, uh, and I had an inside pocket, and it went right in there, and that's where all my cash was and all my credit cards were, mm -hmm. um, so that it was safe. You know, when I went to Amsterdam, they we couldn't go to the hostel beforehand because we wasn't in Amsterdam, so we, like, spent the whole day traveling around, yeah. and all I had was a backpack. And I didn't like walking around with a backpack because mm -hmm. someone could easily. Yep. So I actually yeah. got like one a little lock and a key, and I just oh, yeah. locked yeah. the Travel locks together so if someone yeah. couldn't. I did that a lot too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you're staying at it's hostels, it's annoying have, when you have to unlock yeah. it every time you need like yeah. money or something. But definitely yeah. worth yeah. it. Though. Yeah. yeah. Um, and if you have, um, if you do stay at a hostel, most of them have lock boxes. So you might have to pay extra. Money. Yeah. Or or. Just bring a, there, uh, the ones that I went to had like lockers underneath, but they didn't have locks on them. So bring your own like heavy duty lock. Here's a locker. It doesn't lock. Yeah, <laughs> and I slept with my passport like in my pillow underneath and my wrapped around it. I did that too. I had yep. like my very important valuables like under my pillow while yep. I slept, just because you're in a, a hostel. You're in a room. Yeah. yeah. Like, seven other no, strangers. No, yeah. <laughs> so, it's it's Hostels very common weird. but very weird. <laughs> also, I saw a um. Be careful when you do Airbnb, because I saw an article today that was like someone was in an Airbnb and there was a security camera on the wall and they did not know about it. Ooh, weird. So read the terms and conditions when you book an Airbnb or I've don't book an Airbnb. Few, <laughs> I've stayed at a few Airbnbs where the person who owns the house is actually staying there too. Yeah. yeah. And like they, I get, they probably put that in yeah. on the website and we just didn't read the fine print like mm. you said. But it was very, it was a little uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. um, sure. So just make sure make you're sure aware of what you're agreeing to. Yeah. yeah. Who's going to be there? They don't give you like a password to get in or like a key or lock set key thing. They're probably yeah. staying there with you. Yeah. True. <laughs> Actual bed and breakfasts mm -hmm. are the bomb though, I will say. It's true. You can't beat it. Yeah. I had the most strange experience like recently with an Airbnb in Boston. And we get down there. <clears throat> And I was like, yeah, we're just getting into, like, it was, like, an apartment, mm -hmm. condo thing. And he was like, oh, uh, I'm not in the city. Uh, I need you to go out to this address and nope. pick up the keys and all this stuff. And I was like, all right, let's do it. <laughs> so we went all the way out oh there, God. got the lockbox. It had all of his keys to all the different Airbnbs that he owned. And I, like, I could have just went into any one of your places, and they were all that labeled with nice. the address on them. I made a copy of them. Yeah, that was true. Oh, gosh, yeah. That's very trusting of him. It was a really nice place that we oh, stayed. Good. Like John, I like John Mulaney said, going. don't go to a secondary location. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I know, exactly. Street smarts. <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah, I was traveling alone at that time, too, so I was meeting up with people.